truth shall stand. Given all praise to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, And um, I entitled this video because I just found out that uh, GMS DocuTube was taken down. I had another GMS DocuTube page, but um, I got to see if I can find a password to it because the f the first one was uh, the letters the word was all together GMS DocuTube then the the other one that I did was uh, the words were separated but that page is still up so I got to see if I can get in there and I'll put videos on it but um yeah I found out uh, watching one video uh, that a brother said put up a comment saying that uh, GMS DocuTube was taken down which I was trying to go to it and I couldn't really access it but it was still kind of up so I kind of figured that Esau was doing his little demonic deed now that particular page GMS DocuTube they gave me I believe it was two strikes and they said that they'll put me back on I think sometime in March so I hadn't put up videos, so who, what are they taking my page down for? And they did that with, um, you know, what is it, 666 Mark. They, they, I was supposed to get the page back to put videos on the 66, what is it, 666 Mark. And then all of a sudden, it just they just took it down. So, I mean, if they take down Trump <laughs> and Alex Jones, they're going to take us down. You know, what they've been doing was watching the videos, and, they, and they'll go back to a video that you made two years ago and give you a strike on that particular video so it's obvious they don't want this truth uh, to come out but anyway what I did was I made it easy for myself I just did a word search I went to the scriptures then I went to the apocrypha and I'll read a couple of these uh, scriptures dealing with the word truth and let's see what happens it's not, it's not, this is not going to be a long video anyway Ecclesiastes 37 verse 15 and above all this pray to the Most High that he may direct thy way in truth so what is the truth the gospel what is the gospel good tidings good news what is the good news that we the Most High is going to lift us up and bring down the enemy which is Esau oh yeah and I was watching uh the elder uh, Manatas Akbar did a video he was going into Geno Jennings and I remember a couple of years ago watching that video and I think I did a, a response to that video this is when he was going after Geno Jennings and he read the Apocrypha I don't know where he got the Apocrypha from other than the Israelites and he read um in uh, Second Ezra's uh, six verse, at the point is in in nine. I start from seven, and it mentions Esau as the end of the world, and then he and then he says that uh, that's talking about Esau, which is Jesus. Well, you know what? Let's go to that. Give me a second here. Okay, you, that's why I start at the seventh verse. Really, you should start at the first verse, but it says, to show you that based upon this scripture that he read, it has nothing to do with Jesus, Esau. Anyway, it says, uh, but he was set up by Esau. He's making a lot of money. He has Edomites in his congregation, and he makes a lot of his money or the name of the organization makes a lot of money maybe he gets a salary I don't know how that works but they teach that Edomites and other nations can make it which they're clearly clearly off you know I heard um, Captain uh, Tazariak been trying to set up a, a debate with him for a couple of years and um, uh, Tazariak said uh, that he doesn't he doesn't want to work with me of course because 
he doesn't have the truth. He knows that, see these Christians, they know that, that, that we're the, uh, we're the juggernauts of this thing. Not just us, you know, I just mentioned the captain to Zariac, you know, um, they don't want to deal with us because we know too much, man. And like I said, the fact that this guy goes into the Apocrypha is showing you that he's watching us. Because Christians don't go into the Apocrypha. Now, the Apocrypha, if you're a Roman a devout Roman Catholic, when I say a devout Roman Catholic, I mean someone that's a Christian slash Catholic scholar, historian, biblical historian, you're going to understand the Apocrypha. The average Joe out there, the average preacher, doesn't know what the Apocrypha is. So anyway, it says, uh, 2 Ezra 6, verse 7, Then answered, answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? What times is it talking about? It's talking about an age. Now, this scripture, what comes pops in my mind is Matthew Matter of fact, let me go to that. Matthew 24, verse 3. Matthew 24, verse 3. It says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, a print. A prev, privately, privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Now, when you look up that word world, the word world It's talking about the Roman world. That's why, you know, Acts, the first chapter, you can start about the fifth, sixth, seventh verse. They, the, um, the apostles asked, are, are thou at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel, to Israel, not the kingdom for Israel and the other nations, but to Israel, the kingdom, the Israelites are the kingdom. He told that to the wicked scribes and Pharisees. Because, because they asked him about the end of the world, and they were thinking about the end of the Roman world, the enemies that were over them. Okay, I'm going to look up the end. It means completion, con consumption, end. Strong's G, 4930, Suntelia. For the end. So when, so when um, the disciples confronted the Lord about that, they were thinking about the end of the Roman Empire, but they didn't understand that the the Roman Empire was going to die and come back to life. Now I'm gonna look up the word world. Strong's G one sixty five, I own, I own. We say eon, I own. It means forever and unbroken age, perpetual, perpetuity of time, eternity, the world, universe, period of time. That's what it actually means. Period of time. Period of time. Age. Period of time, age. Because the Roman Empire will not be a perpetual uh, empire or the, the world or the universe. The, the, the word, the proper word or breakdown for the word world is period of time, eon. As opposed to cosmos or oikomeni. So 
let's get let's come back to uh second Ezra six verse seven. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? And then it's gonna mention Jacob and Esau. And we're gonna we're gonna see that. Well, let me just keep reading. Let me stop talking. Or oh, when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? The end of the first is Esau's reign, and the beginning that followeth is Jacob's reign, which our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is a son of Jacob. It says, A verse, and he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. Now that had to happen. Jacob's hand had to hold onto Esau's hill because it was a race to who who gets to the top, who comes out first. Because the first the first son that comes out, they receive the blessings. They receive the the principal blessings. So Esau received the principal blessings. That's why Jacob, Yaquab, had to supplant him. Now, was that wicked? You can say that. But it was through the Spirit. The Most High set it up that way. Hey, I, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all those things. So that was sort of a wicked. He, he, he uh, pulled a fast one on Esau. But it was all through the Spirit. It was all through the Spirit. And that's why Esau has a perpetual hatred for us. I'm talking about the elite. It says, for Esau, for Esau, now what is it, now how is it, how is Esau talking about Esau or Jesus? This guy, G, Gino Jennings, he knows, he knows the truth. He knows who Esau is and he watches us. And he wouldn't dare uh, challenge any of the Israelites. He wouldn't have no sit down with no Israelites because he's set up. He got Edomites behind him. He's got a world ministry. It, it goes on. Let me go back to the A verse again. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. And then now, you know what I'm gonna do? Let me go to Genesis. Was that Genesis 25? Genesis 25. I'll start at 19. Okay, it says, and these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Uh, Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took uh, Rebekah uh, to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, uh, the Syrian. Oh, by the way, when you say the Syrian, he wasn't a Syri Syrian, he was a Hebrew. He was a Hebrew. Uh, Bethuel, the daughter of Bethuel, Bethuel and Rebekah were sons of uh, of. Uh, well, Bethuel was the son of Abraham's father, which was Terah, which made them what? Hebrews. Now, you received names because you lived in a certain land, and you would call a, a, a Assyrian or an Assyrian or, you know, there's a scripture where it says your mother was a Canaanite, meaning you came out, the, you came out of Egypt and you took over the land of Canaan. So, you would nourish as a nation in the land from the land of Canaan, which was your mother. It was a land, motherland. So it says, uh, 20th verse again, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Pandanaram. So he wasn't an actual Syrian. He was a Hebrew from the line of, uh, same line that Ab Abraham came out of. It says, the sister of Liban, the Syrian. Now, Rebecca was a 
sister to Laban, Laban had two daughters, Re uh, Leah and Rachel, which their aunt was Rebecca. So what was Jacob to Rachel, Rachel and Leah and Rachel? They were cousins. To be exact, they were first cousins. As a matter of fact, Abraham and uh, Sarah uh, were, were brother and sister. It says, uh, you no, know, you could say half sister, half sister, half brother. It says, and Isaac entreated uh, Yahweh for his wife because she was barren and Yahweh was entreated unto him and Rebecca his wife conceived now when you look up that word conceived let's look up that word conceived you got to go on to those words conceived Okay, it doesn't really go into. It doesn't really go into anything, so let's come back. It pretty much says the same thing to conceive. Twenty second verse, Genesis twenty five, verse twenty two, and the children stuck struggle together within her let me look up the word struggle struggle together ratazata and it was a death a death match in her womb like if you look at her, her stomach she pulled her blouse up you would see the the stomach moving moving you know back and forth you'd see you know it was a death match going on in there because they, those were the two opposing spirits it says to crush oppress to crush get crushed be crushed so they, they, that was a ufc match you know, they were grounding and pounding and choke, trying to choke each other out because it was two opposing spirits. To crush, oppress, crushed, uh, to, to be crushed, uh, to be broken, to crush in pieces, to grievously oppress, to oppress, to crush, to crush each other. So there was a death match going on in that body because of what I said earlier two opposing forces the forces of the dark side and forces of the light side the force the forces of good versus the forces of evil Esau is the personification of evil of wickedness Jacob is the uh, personification of light goodness righteousness So we don't look at Esau because he looks like an Edom, but guess what? The Most High put that mark on him, which is Cain and Abel. And it's time, it's time for this man to go down. Okay, I don't got it. You know what? I'm sorry. Let me read a little bit more. So we're back to the basics. And I see we got to go back to the basics. Twenty-second verse, and the children struggled, had a death match. It was a UFC match, cage match, with no no rules, and the winner was the one that killed the other one. So they were trying to kill each other. These two little infants were trying to kill each other. Like I said, opposing spirits. The light versus the darkness, good versus evil wickedness versus righteousness 
demon versus righteous angel, negative angel versus righteous angel, because they were angels. All of us are angels. It says, the children struggled together within her, and she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said, Yahweh said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Now, how are you going to get two nations out of the same, um, um, one man, Jacob, lay with a woman? Um, I'm sorry, uh, Isaac lay with a woman, Rebecca, and they had twins. So those twins are brothers and, and sisters, and therefore they say, if you have a, a wife and you um, lay with your wife and she has twins, if you're a Judite, or Yahweh, yeah, your children will both be Yahweh, because I'm trying to get away from that J. So what does it mean by two names? Because there were two, the Most High put two different spirits, even though it came out of the seed of a righteous man, both the wicked and the righteous came out of that same seed that split. This is what Genesis, the third chapter, is talking about. The, the seed of the woman and the seed of the dragon. I'm not going to go into that. That was Esau and, and Jacob. At first, they were uh, Cain and Abel. It says, two nations, 23rd verse, two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people. Two different types of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. When it comes to sports, this is why they have a hard time letting Israelite uh, play in, uh, in the uh, NH NHL, the National Hockey League, or any hockey league around the world because they know by going to the history of Jake, they know that it, they dominate, they'll dominate hockey. And a lot of those hockey players, those great ones, a lot of them are Jake that look like Edomites. See, Esau doesn't understand that. You know, NBA, if you go back to the 50s and the 40s, you had nothing but Edomites, and the game was boring. And that's why Jake dominates, you know, that's why Jake dominates the uh, NBA. Same goes with boxing. You, have, it's, you got Jake up in there, Israel up in there, which includes Issachar, Ephraim, Yahweh, Bunyamian, Benjamin, and um, you got Levi up in there. And you got some Gadites up in there too. Esau got to take a back seat. The only ones that can compete with them are them Russians. And a lot of them are Jake that look like Edomites. It says, um, the one shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. The elder son, so the blessing was, the, the youngest son, because of the prophecy, the eldest son shall serve the, the youngest son. And they already served us. They broke off the yoke of their neck, and they're in power right now, and they're getting ready to go be up under us uh, once again. And Esau knows that. See, the elite scholars of Esau, they know that they're Edomites. I've been saying that for years. I've been saying that for years. They know they know that they're the Edomites. This is why we at GMS, we don't have debates with nobody because we have the truth. You on the trip, you got a map, you on a trip, right? And somebody tells you, oh, you're going the wrong way. You should, you don't even listen to that person. You don't even want to, see, you, you got the map. You got the GPS. So let's go back and I'm going to close it. It was a little bit longer than it then. But this is a basic, it's, this is a, some, you got to go back to the basics. You got to deal with them basics sometimes. Because y'all have been in this thing for 10, 11, 12, 13 years, 14 years. You already know this. You're already veterans. So when we teach these lessons, we, don't, we ain't teaching it to y'all because y'all already know it. This is for the ones that started watching videos maybe a year ago, two years ago. And you can tell that there's a lot of 
new people to this thing because they're asking very basic questions that we already answered, but they don't know that they haven't watched all the videos. So you got to come back and you got to reteach them. So it says, it says, uh, so we know that Esau in the ninth verse is talking about the same Esau in the eighth verse. So what the hell are you talking about, Geno Jennings? What the hell? What are you just doing what you're supposed to do? It says, for Esau, which is in the eighth verse, the brother of Jacob is the end of the world. But, so that proves who, who is in power right now. Esau is in power, which are who? The so-called white man. And Jacob, which is us, is the beginning of it that followeth. Ten verse. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other questions Ezra's asked thou not, because it wasn't given to Ezra that he he received some of the prophecy. See, we know more than the prophets, all the prophets back in the day. We all all those uh, prophetic visions that the prophets received that they wrote down, they didn't understand them. John didn't understand them. Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Obadiah, they didn't understand Amos, they didn't understand what they were writing down, the visions that they saw. We understand it. So you got a guy saying, I wrote a book about, you know, you know what you got to write a book for? The book is already written. It goes on to say in 11 verse, I answered then and said, O oh Lord, that beareth rule, if I have found favor in thy sight, I beseech thee, show thy servant the end of thy tokens, which means signs, whereof thou showeth me part the other night, or the last night. So he answered and said unto me, Stand up upon thy feet and hear a mighty sounding voice. And it, and it shall be as it were a great motion, but the place where thou standest shall not be moved. Meaning, you're gonna be, you're gonna, that, that was a gigantic ship that spoke a mighty sounding voice. And it was, it was the, sh the ship that came down during the so-called transfiguration of our Lord. It was a ship that came down with a speaker system so you can understand. It says, and therefore when it speaketh, be not afraid because he, because he, he heard the, the sound. And there's gonna be, so don't be surprised when you start, you know, we see a lot of these uh, sh uh, chariots, but don't be su surprised when you start hearing sounds coming from them chariots and voices coming from them chariots. Hell, they might start speaking the Hebrew. It said, for the word, 15 verse, for the word is of the end, for the word is of the end, and the foundation of earth is understood. And why? 16 verse, because the speech of things, of these things, trembleth and is moved, for it knoweth that the end of things, of these things, must be changed. You think uh, 2020 was a bad year? I, I'm i looking at 2021 to be worse than 2020. And it happened that when I had heard it, I stood up upon my feet and hearkened, listened, and behold, there was a voice that spake and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. Yahweh Shai, when he spoke, it was like the sound of many waters. And it said, behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. When 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 did that take place? It's taking place right now. And ultimately we're gonna um, experience Jacob's trouble. And we'll begin to make inquisition of them that they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness 
and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. So we're coming to the end of being afflicted by Esau. And, and when the world that shall begin to vanish away, Esau's world, shall be finished, then will I show the token, these tokens, the book shall be open before the firmament. What does it mean, the book shall be open before the firmament? Meaning through the web. That's why they're taking down sites, because they're saying, we're waking up too many Israelites. We got to start taking these pages down. And they shall see all together. What does that mean? They shall see all together. That means you can be in Africa and watch videos. You can be in Russia. You can be anywhere on the planet Earth and you can all be watching the same uh, uh, video. So, Harai God, you made a statement to uh, uh, GMS Las Vegas that you really don't have the truth because you, you didn't learn it from a teacher. You learned it from the web. Well, get, well what do you think this scripture is all about? It says... The 20th verse, 2nd Ezra 6, verse 20. It said, the book shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall see all together. Because the signal goes out up beyond the firmament where the satellite is, and then it's, and then it's, um, you see it through these signals. That's why you have uh, cable companies and you have feed horns, which is the uh, the horn of the unicorn. That's a whole another topic right there. But anyway, I'm going to say Shalom. I didn't want to make this too long, but it's uh, on to the next one. Shalom.